Hi, I'm Rita Wilkins, also known as the Downsizing Designer. So I'm doing this off-site tonight from um, some dear friends home who are um, had invited me over for dinner, and so I'm taking a few minutes to do my Facebook Live. So tonight's topic is how to combine households, um, particularly in second marriages or, or, you know, just when you've downsized and you're starting all over again. So as an interior designer for over 35 years, you know, I've often been asked to consult with clients who are merging households so they can create that common vision, avoid, you know, unnecessary arguments and all the emotions that go along with it, and also to create a pathway forward together. So done right, um, both parties feel heard and the experience, and the experience is a bonding one um, that enhances the relationship as they move forward together. So while blending two households, two different aesthetics can be very challenging. Hi, Mary. <laughs> there are some, um, there's all sorts of simple logical steps that we can take um, that will anticipate and also manage the potential obstacles that could occur in the blending of two families. So the first one is to be open, honest, and respectful um, in your communications with each other. So when you blend households, it can be a test actually um, for that relationship because it requires each party to, number one, use your voice and speak up and, and be heard, but do it in a respectful way. And also to express your priorities. So um, for instance, the need to be together um, or the time alone, um, and just having your privacy. If you don't mention these things um, up front when you're moving in together, it may not exactly work. So the other thing is, is to be flexible and open-minded. And of course, this seems obvious, um, but if the partner wants something and you don't, it's important to speak up and to also be flexible in your thinking that maybe we could make that work. So, and then the other thing about being open and honest <clears throat> is to be willing to make choices. So choose to make it work. And how can you come to some common ground? <clears throat> so a second thing to do when you are trying to merge households is to create a unified vision and a look. So as a designer, I've done this for years. Um, and, I, and, and if I'm asked to be part of this um, trio, um, I request individual consultations so that I can understand each of the client's wants, needs, and wish lists individually and what their priorities are. And I just ask a lot of questions and we discuss their style, their aesthetic, um, colors, and, and the, all those kinds of things and understand from them what's negotiable and what's non-negotiable. So we do talk about function, you know, how did they live, work, and play? How do they want to live, work, and play um, in this new combined household? Um, also, I help them clarify their vision, their goals, and their priorities, um, what home looks like um, to them. And of course, that will all evolve over a period of time. So the third step in trying to help people um, blend households is to create a reality check. So what fits, what doesn't fit. So it's a thorough field measure of the new space that they'll be moving into, um, to inventory, to photo, measure any existing items that he or she might want to bring with. And you've probably heard me talk about the ABCs, but the ABCs is what works and what doesn't work. And then um, what, do you need to dispose of or donate? And what do you need to let go of? So when you're working with a couple, you know, it may well be that she has a sofa that she loves and he can't stand it. But then when you get down into it, it may just be that he just doesn't like the fabric. Well, of course, then it could be reupholstered. So when you, we have our reality check, I can with assuredness tell them this will work space-wise or it won't. And then in terms of the aesthetic, we can always work on that. The fourth step is to manage emotions. So when it comes to this is mine and that's yours, you don't have to love it too. <laughs> um, and that's the funny thing is like they may have something that they absolutely um, love, but are they prepared to 
negotiate, to compromise, or to find some middle ground because you may just decide together that it's not right for both of you or that you do want it and, and you're going to figure it out. So, and you'll likely not get 100% of what you want all the time. So it's important to discuss what you love, um, what you could live without, and what you can't stand. And this is where communication is so key because if you really can't stand that piece, I think it's pretty important that they know that and they might um, be willing to just let it go. On the other hand, you might be willing to negotiate and find some middle ground that maybe it could be painted or reupholstered or something or other so it can be modified. So it's important then to look for those creative options and to build that middle ground together. So if it can be reupholstered, if it can be repainted, um, and another thing is if it can be repurposed. Um, so um, a cabinet that you might be using in the dining room might be something that you could use in your bedroom or vice versa, or a bachelor chest might now become a nightstand. So you really have to start thinking creatively, thinking out of the box when you are merging households because things don't have to be the way that they have always been. So the fifth step is shopping together for any new items. Now this can actually be a very bonding experience. So since you now share, you know, a, a more common vision of what your home is going to look like, have fun shopping together, especially for things like artwork, accessories, area rugs, those kind of things that now they become yours together. So, and the last step is worst case scenario, just scrap it all, start all over again, sell it, donate it. It's definitely not worth the argument and, you know, damaging the loving relationship. So after all, it is just stuff. So if you're merging households and um, if you are in doubt and you want to consult with a designer, I would love to um, talk to you about it. I'm at Rita Wilkins at RitaWilkins.com. This is something I've, I've been doing for many years. I actually love that, being that third party because um, it, it gives you a sense of, okay, I, I hear you and I hear you and what can we do to come together? And anyway, so if you are interested, just reach out to me, Rita Wilkins at RitaWilkins.com. I hope this helps. Take care.